What's going on, everyone? This is Michael Stewart Isaacs. And this is Shemekka Ebony. And this is your next installment of Sunday Stacks. Stacks. We're excited to get back with you all. This has been a very, very interesting week. We have a lot to unpack. But as always, in good, fun Sunday Stacks fashion, we, we have to always first reflect on our core beliefs, which is what we call FCC. That is a family, community, and company. So let's start with the family, right? So as a family, you know, we like to call ourselves affectionately the brilliant bunch. And we like to get together and do certain things we learn to enjoy. And every now and then, we find something that our family all just gravitate to and fall in love with. And this time around, it happens to be Snoop Cereal. Yes! Have you heard Fruity of it? Loops. Snoop Cereal. We found Snoop Cereal by the most unconventional way. We went to Las Vegas. We were there for a licensing expo. And all of a sudden, we had this chance opportunity to meet the one and only Master, Master P, P, who is a partner in this Snoop serial venture so like anyone we were curious to meet the legend the man the myth and essentially we we ended up doing a consumer taste test right there Mm, and then and all of a sudden i mean i like everyone else who tried it fell in love with this cereal (laughs) tell them a little bit about your experiences with this oh it is good i mean even as an adult I still love a really good cereal. And if you think about the blending of the taste of Lucky Charms and Fruit Loops together, Fruity Loops will oh, definitely man. get you there. Fruity Thank you, Loops. Snoop oh, Dogg. I love the energy behind it. It was Affirmations that did it for me when I first uh, came across the uh educational aspects of what Snoop Dogg is doing. So my children have had the opportunity to wake up to his affirmations every morning, repeating them, and while eating his cereal. It's been pretty dope. I mean, I think it's amazing. I mean, you think about someone like Snoop Dogg, Master P, two gentlemen who came from rough beginnings, who had different entrepreneurial choices in the beginning of their career, but they're changing culture, and they've changed it one way, and now they're they're seeing ways that they can start to give back and start to empower and change the perspective of youth early to give them a different shot that they may not have. But this is the concern we have this week. This is the concern. Let's talk about it. We can't find the Snoop cereal We cannot anymore. find Snoop cereal. We went to all our local food spaces such as the, the Food Lions, the, the Walmarts, Walmarts, you know, and we used to go there and have to chase down, you know, different employees to help us locate the Snoop cereal yes. products. Telling them I they mean, need to make sure they reorder them. We were just like, I mean, this is the best cereal. We're telling people about the cereal. We literally, we don't, one thing about us, we don't know how to lie. We tell the truth. Tell we're a little truth. bit too honest. And one thing I can tell you is this cereal is delicious. And I enjoy getting behind it because of the entrepreneurs that are connected to it. And um, I was actually in the grocery store looking for it today again. And it wasn't there, but it gave me the opportunity to have a moment to teach my mom about marketing and the ins and outs of how the marketplace is in grocery stores and how different cereal brands pay for space for advertising in these stores and they negotiate these rates and it's a lot of back end things and thinking about the barriers as a minority represented partnership with Snoop Cereal, uh, the, the barriers that there are set up to get that prime time space, that eye level space, that corner aisle space. So it was a good opportunity to kind of give her an overview of what's going on in the kitchen um, as to why there's a reason why we got to ask for Snoop Cereal at our local grocery store so that we can create the demand that gets them back on the shelf. Boy, do y'all hear this? This entrepreneurial woman right here just gave you all a marketing clinic. But she's right. We have to first, as a consumer base, demand that these cereals continue to stay out there, stay on the store shelves, occupy some good space because we want to continue to buy it. And as we were, we were looking for it wherever it was located because we were just 
happy and appreciated one that we enjoyed it our kids enjoyed it but it was almost an adventure trying to locate them right. and now it's like we can't even find it and i hope that for whatever reason that the people who are putting this out and the stores that are giving the shot they keep giving it a shot it's a very delicious cereal mm -hmm. um you know our children enjoy it i think other families will continue to enjoy it i know business sometimes is zero sum you want things to work like right out the gate but you got to give things time you got to grow the market like how we're here spreading the word in regards to you know what we enjoyed with this um you know simple treat something that we can put a infectious name to snoop is something that has become such a you know household name a brand yeah. but at the same time again he's making quality products that are meant to be empowering we need to start to not just i, I shouldn't have to tell you to support the the black dollar like when someone's making the best product i think that's the thing with me as an entrepreneur i look at blackness as a culture that could make the best products like whatever we create, whatever we do is just seen as the best product mm -hmm. in the market. Like the blacksmith, right? You would go to the blacksmith because they were the best craft people. When you go to black people, we're the best crafters, we're the best designers, we're the best cookers, we're the best, you know, I mean, we have so we many rich best. culture. And we need to look at it more like that and understand that our culture and even the Snoop cereal should not be something that only black people enjoy. This is something yeah, I've seen all everyone. cultures enjoy. Yeah. And that's something we advocate for when we look at, you know, community and building and really understanding if we're going to build our economic backgrounds and we're going to really change our family last names, we need to make sure that our products and services, even though produced by us, is for everyone. Mm -hmm. Because that's the only way we're truly going to be able to be a part of the economy and to be, make ourselves more than just sustainable. We're going to be able to thrive and grow at a different rate than anybody else once we really, like I should say, you know, take on that blacksmith. Black is the best quality. Black is golden. When we touch something, it's, you know, that's what I think. And like I said, I think Snoop Dogg and him changing the image of where he first started in this world and what him and Master P are doing now to really promote this cereal, to connect with the youth, is admirable. And I think we should continue to support these things on all levels. Absolutely. That's it. That feels good. <laughs> and thank you for lifting that up. So well, as we look to transition, you know, that was definitely, you know, a fun topic. But let's talk about that. We talked about Snoop Cereal not being in the grocery stores. And as a person of my stature, I love entrepreneurship. I love business. I love finance. I love financial literacy. And one thing I'm noticing out here in the world is we're getting into a bigger what we would call credit card economy where people right now, you know, they're talking about the the reversals of what Biden was trying to do with the uh, student loans. We're looking at people who are trying to travel and do different, th you know, shoppings they might have to do for different parts of the season. I mean, we almost have been bred to be a consumer culture, and we're looking at a generation that looks at going to Cho Coachella as more important than going to college. So we have a different types of set of values. We have a different set of how we spend money nowadays. And the question is, is are we in a credit card economy? Will we always just live in this economy where people owe? Or is there really supposed to be some way that people are supposed to grow their wealth? And so I want you to put some of your thoughts in the comments. We want to definitely start to have this greater conversation about where the economy is going, how credit and new things like that playing a part. Me as an entrepreneur, I'm happy when I have access to credit, when I have access to use it. But I always want to use credit responsibly. I want to make sure that credit is a builder to me producing something that will create cash flow. And that cash flow will be able to handle the credit and also allow me to get even more. And that's the thing about the system of credit, right? We make it where we want to do and consume. But if we can get out here and start to utilize it right to be an investment vehicle for us to create cash flow and we understand what we're attempting to do when we access credit, then we can start to get a handle on what the, the, the use of credit can really do to benefit our communities. What's your thoughts? You know, when I was sitting here listening to what you were sharing, I, you know, thought through my lived experience uh, being offered credit at 18 um, just because I was legally 18, but I was still in high school and getting credit card offers um, going into college and how it damaged my credit 
um, because I was being offered so much and had not had that uh, financial literacy uh, poured into me or even uh, experienced to me in my environment and it took me a lot of years to build up my credit again and kind of begin again and, and new and fresh and thinking about that credit card journey now now my credit is good again and guess what's happening good and no credit are equal opportunity for <laughs> lending right. creditors and so all these offers are coming back in now but you know uh, being healed in these areas of brokenness when it comes to my relationship with money has allowed me to be a wiser person going into these offers, knowing that every offer really isn't for me and everything shiny isn't mine. Hey, that's well said. And I think that's the key as we are looking to not only empower ourselves, some of our listeners, some of you all are maybe 18 or younger. Some of you all may be in your 20s. Some of you may be in your 30s and have children. That different aspects of our lives, the different components of credit and other things that we utilize to help stabilize our lives have to be addressed in different ways. Hopefully you didn't set yourself up when you were younger for debts that you can't handle when you get older. And I think that's something as families, we have to start to educate ourselves and communicate more. I tell the people all the time, if we don't communicate, we have no community. So we have to communicate our mistakes. We have to communicate ways to overcome. And if we don't tell our children, if we don't show them the way, if we don't utilize ourselves as a sacrificial example of some mistake we made because somehow we feel we have to be perfect in people's eyes, then sometimes we're keeping people continuing cycles that they may not have to continue and we want to kind of change all that. So part of that too, when I think about, you know, credit and even, you know, looking at wonderful entrepreneurs such as Shemeca Ebony, myself, and those that are in our circles, is that we realize that being an entrepreneur, being a business owner, does help improve your credit, does help to improve what we like to say is your citizenship, to give you a different way of rebuilding. But like a business, I always tell people when you start that first year of a business, it's like it's still a baby, it's still young. It's like you have to count business years like it's a child, and you have to allow for that thing to develop and grow with the natural cycles of development. And so mm -hmm. part of that is when someone starts their business, just like when someone is at a baby shower or when someone is ready to give birth or that first birthday comes for that business, just like a child, you give presents, you give. So what is the practices of us learning the giving practice or tithing into someone's business, into someone's idea, just like it's a child, just like it's a baby, just like you're saving for graduations and, you know, going to colleges and stuff. We need to start treating those same mental practices and how we treat people with business ideas. And we have to learn how to start to give into that part to create a greater tithing spirit. And that as a, a general practice that we do for people with new businesses as we're helping to seed invest into their business. Mm, that sounds really good. I'm definitely appreciative of you lifting that. Uh, something that comes to mind for me is that we be, we all believe that we're going to be successful un until that first failure hits. And then sometimes our optimism falls and then that feeling of unworthiness comes in. And as an entrepreneur, you're going to see those rises and falls coming often. But when you have people investing in your business, investing in your vision, that is the same as tithing. They are um, putting a portion in to support what you're doing. And the expectation is that it's going to multiply. There's going to be some outputs that are going to be favorable, um, whether you're an investor or you are a faithful tither you believe you know even tithing in ministry you believe your tithe is what you're called to do as a minimum but you have an expectation and assignment to that tithe um, that it go towards something bigger and greater than you so it's the same thing when you think about uh, tithing in business is that someone's believing in you and this is how they're showing you they believe by tithing into your vision f to help support your journey, manifesting journey I love it. And I think the same way we think about college, when someone knows someone's going to college, we have to have that same spirit for people who are starting businesses to really get them on their feet, understand that they are going to need capital. They are going to need time and money buys us time. 
but we also have to have the mindset to get the right information so we can have more efficient execution in the things we're doing. One thing I love too, what brought up this topic was, you know, uh, I did a speaking uh, conversation a few days back and there's a video I put out there, if you all can check it out, that speaks on this in regards to just breaking down the difference with a pastor being an entrepreneur type of archetype and that needing to need tithing and stuff, as well as, um, you know, that of a banker, you need a deposit. And then as a farmer, you need to understand how to process the yield. When you plant a seed, you have to allow for that seed to grow for and know when the seasons are to plant seeds so that they can grow at their best and optimum rate. And I think that's where we're just continuing to sharpen the tool. And that's why we like to share this information with you as an audience is that we bring so much with family, community, and company that mm -hmm. we just want to have this Sunday Stacks platform as a way of continue to show you ways that you can connect. Um, another thing I would like to wrap is that I'm super excited for all of y'all to check out our YouTube channel on the I Am Brilliant platform where we have new videos launching. I had the pleasure of being able to speak at the wonderful Duke University. Um, I did a presentation mm -hmm. for a group of engineer students that are you know, going to the next level in regards to corporate spaces and other things that are going to shape the, the, the future of our country, the future of the world. And I'm just excited that I was able to be a speaker in a series that was able to motivate and uplift their mindsets to not just be so technical when we're all thinking, oh, it's all about a job and it's all about this new technology, but we're we're rebooting the human spirit mm, and yes, we're giving people so this. Important. It's so important, right? We're just giving people this uplifting spirit. So um, I, I thank the lovely Shemeca Ebony when she was on video. So she's up there. You know, when you think about where she's at, she's definitely, you know, there supporting. And these are the things we want to do when we bring the community and we can connect. You know, we're, we're motivational speakers. We're keynote speakers. Um, and we show up for our community. We show up for those who reach out. And we definitely show out. We, we bring an impact everywhere we go. So we're grateful that God afford us these opportunities to thrive and grow in these type of spaces. And we hope that we're truly helping people to elevate their consciousness and their belief in themselves every time our core I Am Brilliant team comes out and really just, you know, illuminates our light just for them to feel the right to illuminate their own. Mm, I love it. Uh, to that uh, expansion and uh, really drilling down, I just want to shout out that While I'm Getting Naked is now currently restocked in Noir Collective in Asheville, North Carolina. So you can go get your copy of While I'm Getting Naked yes. at, while you're in Asheville, wherever yeah. you may be visiting. Definitely check out New Art Collective, which is a collective of black artists and authors um, that have curated uh, their items within this store. And uh, it's really incredible space, good vibe, great people. And you can find me on the shelf. So check out while I'm getting naked com and stop in to New Art Collective in Asheville and pick up a copy yes Asheville NC an up-and-coming place if you ain't been to the Biltmore if you ain't you know just make it a whole a whole vacation whole spot trip. you know you met you know I'm telling you it's, it's it's one of those things you have to do you feel like you went to France or something so it's definitely amazing so definitely um, as well, we I wouldn't into, say France because right now they got a bed bug problem. Oh boy, well, we ain't gonna get into that tea right now, so well, they're gonna get it together before the Olympics. We, we, we got we believe in you, France, you know, yes. we believe in Paris, yes. But uh, definitely, um, we want to definitely shout out, um, we have our divorce series starting today which is sunday october 8th this is our divorce series that we're super excited to absolutely. share absolutely we're talking about safe spaces yes places that people can come together and really be able to look at divorce in a whole new paradigm and really start to you know uplift their consciousness on what it means to be an individual whole and what it means to come together with another whole individual and really start to take on that journey of, you know, oneness if you see it for the, you know, for the right reason. So that's what we hope to bring to this series. And Shemeca Avenue definitely lead us to that space. And, you know, uh, while I'm getting naked is a wonderful tool for couples to utilize to yes. 
yes. you know, just really reflect and journal and really just try to grow to that next level. So as always, we love to stay with you, but we have to wrap this episode of Sunday Stacks. Make sure you like and subscribe and tell a friend about it. Yes, and leave some comments for some of the topics that you heard today. And we definitely, as we always say, I, I am brilliant. brilliant. You, you are, are too. too. Thank you for choosing this episode of Sunday Stacks, and we'll see you next time.